Amen, amen. All right, are you ready this morning to see what the Lord has for us this morning? Amen. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, Philippians 4. <coughs> Pastor Bruce, if I get to coughing really bad, you're just going to have to jump up here and take over. Amen. <coughs> That'll get him to pray in. Amen. <laughs> It says we're going to start in verse 10, 4, 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though surely you did care, but you lacked opportunity. What's, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, right? What's he saying right now? He's <coughs> speaking to the church of Philippians. He's telling them, thank you for sending me money, right? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Well, I got one person who agrees with me. How about everybody else? <clears throat> All right, come on now. You can say it's okay, it's okay. And even if you're wrong, we won't laugh long. Amen. <laughs> it says, now listen, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. All right, let's talk this morning about what that means. <clears throat> not that he's telling them about his need because he's learned what? To be what? Content. content. Do you understand what it means to be content? Yes. Are you sure? Because most of you take Tent and you, you, you actually, you say this, I've learned to be lazy. Uh-oh, got real quiet quick, didn't it? Because we mistake content for complacency and complacency for lazy. Come on now. <clears throat> Being content doesn't mean that you accept the circumstance that you're in. Amen? Being content doesn't mean that you don't want to do better. Being content means that you're not complaining about where you are. There's a huge difference. You see, there's an underlying teaching in the church, an underlying teaching in the church that money is bad and wanting to be successful is evil and then that you shouldn't try or want to, to get ahead and to do better and that if you own too many things that you're materialistic. Right? <clears throat> I don't know where the church got that philosophy from because that's not what my Bible says. My Bible says that the Lord wants to prosper me as my soul prospers. That's what my Bible says. My Bible says it's better to give than to receive. Now, let me just let you in a little secret. You can have all the things that you want as long as none of the things have you. Amen. There's a huge difference between having things and things having you. All right. Because normally somebody who's pointing the finger about what somebody else has or whatever, they're trying to say, well, he should be content, blah, blah, blah. Well, no. You're trying to justify that you have no lack or no motivation, that you're not willing to risk. You're not willing to step out. You're not willing. You understand what I'm saying? Content does not mean that I accept the path that I'm on, that it's never going to get any better, that it is as good as it gets, that God, you understand what I'm saying? That's not content. And it frustrates me. Can you tell I'm a little frustrated? It frustrates me. When people belittle and criticize somebody else because they have ambition to do better and to get ahead. Listen, content means scripturally that I am happy where I am. It means that I'm not complaining because I don't have everything that I need. It means that I'm not jealous of what somebody else has. It means that it's okay for somebody to have more than I do. It's so you understand what I'm saying? Content means that, Lord, I accept where I am today, and I am grateful that you've blessed me to where I am today. But, God, tomorrow is a new day. And I expect blessing and favor to move me from where I am, from this level to the next. Amen? Amen. You see, content doesn't mean that I settle. Church, we settle far too much in areas of your life that you should not settle. And we accept what's going on and we think, well, that must be God's will for my life. You know what God's will for your life is? It's to bless you. It's to heal you. It's to prosper you. 
It's for you to live a life exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or ask. You know, when I pray for somebody who's sick and not feeling well, and they say, well, if it's the Lord's will that I be healed. <laughs> well, how about this? How about assuming it is the Lord's will that you be healed? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you say, well, pastor, what if the Lord doesn't heal them and he takes them home and, and their healing comes by going to be with heaven? Well, praise the Lord. That's the way it worked. Amen. But my faith believes that I can have heaven here on earth is what my faith believes. My faith believes that he sent his word and that he healed him. And my faith that he took and bore all my sickness, all my disease. Amen. My, my mother-in-law is laying in the hospital bed and she is 91 years old, loves the Lord, ready to go home to be with her. And I said, Lord, this is my prayer. Lord, I want you to heal her in the name of Jesus. I expect her to be healed in the name of Jesus. And if it's her time to go home with you, Father, then let her go home. Let her have a wonderful day at home, living in peace, being in your presence, and fall asleep and wake up with you. Amen. Don't accept lying in a hospital bed and going to be with Jesus. Don't accept the what. Can you understand what I'm saying? Don't let that level of contentment lead to laziness and complacency. Expect more. Expect more. People say, well, I don't want to set myself up for failure. Well, you know what? Neither does the Lord. So how about you do what he says? You know, how about you do what he says? You, you know, it, it never ceases to amaze me. <coughs> I have men that work for me. And I'll go tell them something to do. This is what I need you to do. I want you to do this, 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 this. You understand what I'm saying? I go away and I come back later and I look at what they're doing and I'm trying to figure out <clears throat> what happened. And I, and I, hey, 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 what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know what they inevitably say to me? I'm doing just what you told me to do. <laughs> oh, let me, let me think about this a minute. I told you to do it wrong on purpose, right? Because I, I had to pay you to do it wrong the first time, and I want to pay you to fix it again. But you know what the problem is? Here's the problem. Now listen to me, because this is your problem. When I'm speaking to one of these gentlemen that knows enough just to be dangerous, okay? You understand what I'm saying? He ain't as good as he thinks he is, but he thinks he is. He is listening to me for about the first 20 seconds. And then after that, he has already started forming in his head how he would do it and what he would do. Well, he's wrong. And then when it's all said and done, he has the audacity and the nerve to look me right in the eyes and say, I did just what you told me to do. And I'm thinking, there must be a Spanglish issue here. <laughs> Are you not listening to the words coming out of my mouth? That's what we do with the word. We think we know what the Bible says. We think we understand what the Holy Spirit's saying or what the pastor's saying or what your teacher's saying. And then you listen for all of about 30 seconds of that conversation. And then you automatically make judgments and assessments about how you believe or how you've been taught. Well, how about this? How about you finally dump your brain bucket? Okay. Let go of all that you think you know and let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. And let him teach you the difference between content and complacent between content and lazy I can't stand lazy I don't like lazy that's an ugly place to be amen listen everything in this life comes by work 
Everything comes through work. It is the same spiritually. It takes work to grow in wisdom and knowledge. It takes work to keep God first in your life. It takes work to be a part. You understand what I'm saying? It takes work and effort. You, you know, the blessings of the Lord, my Bible says, they make one rich and add no sorrow therein, you know. But see, we keep assuming that the blessing is just going to tackle you and run you over. Well, it only tackles you and runs you over after you've done the work. Amen. After you've ran your race. After you've realized that there's a part that I have to play. Amen. You know, we get faith and we get works and we get them all balled up. You got to understand that faith without works is dead. But works isn't what makes your faith. There's a balance between the two that you need to work on. It's, it's like this, you know, <clears throat> it always amazes me when somebody comes and say, Pastor, I'm looking for a job. I need you to pray with me that I'm going to find a job. Okay, praise the Lord, let's pray. So we pray, and then I ask him, well, <clears throat> how many applications have you sent out? Well, I haven't sent out any. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, I just prayed for the Lord to help me find a job. Now I'm going to go home and sit on the couch. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If you're praying for the Lord to find you a job, what should you be doing? How about looking for a job? Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Now, listen to me. There are things that you pray for that are beyond your scope of control. You understand what I'm saying? There are things that you pray for that the only thing the Lord wants you to do is to stand in faith and believe. Are you with me this morning? But there are things that you're praying for that you need to put some work in. There's some things that you're praying for that you, you, you have a part to play. You, you know, we got to quit being absentee disciples. Amen. Some of you got way too much PTO. <laughs> Paid time off. You need to get back more on the on. Amen. All right. Are you with me this morning? <clears throat> it says, now listen, not that I speak in regard to need for I learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to bound. He's saying, I know what it's like to suffer lack. And I know what it's like to have an abundance. All right. Now, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, right? You understand that? All right, so let me ask you in your life, whenever you are suffering lack, are you content? No. Not normally. <clears throat> we're, we're normally whining and complaining, aren't we? All right, if the Apostle Paul put it in the word that he knows how to, to handle himself, let's say, and he knows what to do when he doesn't have anything, do you think he's trying to tell you that there's going to come a time in your life that you might not have anything? <clears throat> and that what you have and don't have, you still need to trust and rely on the Lord? Do you realize trials and tribulations are a part of your spiritual growth and development? Do you understand that, listen, getting saved isn't the magic pill that you swallow? You understand what I'm saying? And then from now on, whoo! You come on like a dream, peaches and cream. It's all good now, I got Jesus. Yes, it is, spiritually. Yes, it is in my attitude. But no, it is not in the natural. No, it is not in the natural. You see, you have to learn how to be when you have nothing in order to learn how to be when you have it all. If you can't love the Lord in your lack, trust me, you are not going to love him in your abundance. 
the hardest blessing for any Christian to live through is the blessing of prosperity. The hardest blessing for you to ever serve God through is when God blesses you beyond what you think possible. Because all of a sudden, you think how wonderful you are. Look what I did. Look what I accomplished. It wasn't you. It was you and the Lord. Amen. It was you and the Lord. And God brought you through. He blessed you. And how did you thank him? Turned your back. Amen. Now, I realize we're preaching to the choir this morning, right? I understand that. This doesn't apply to any of y'all this morning. But we all have somebody that it does, so take the CD to them. Amen? <laughs> you see, if you can't serve the Lord in your lack, you are not going to serve him in your abundance. If you, now, see, if you can't be content that God still loves you, when everything, you understand what I'm saying? See, that's where the contentment part comes. But where it does not say is that I am content to be here and I'm going to stay here. Amen? Listen, I don't know about you, but I enjoy blessing better than lack. Amen? You know, I don't know about you, but listen, I have been there with no money in the bank. I've been there when the bills weren't paid. I've been there when the bill collectors are calling on the phone. I've, I've been there when they're trying to get you to tell them, well, when are you going to pay them when you have no answer to give? I don't know about you, but I did not enjoy that experience. You understand what I'm saying? And I've also been there when my bills are all paid, when I have money in the bank. When I can sow into the ministry and give to good work, you understand what I'm saying? I like having money better. You understand what I'm saying? But I love the Lord and serve the Lord no matter which camp I find myself in. Amen? My peace and my happiness is not based on the zeros in my checkbook. My opinion of how much the Lord loves me is not based on the zeros in my checkbook. My opinion of how God answers prayer, you understand what I'm saying? Because, listen to me, it takes years of practice. But I know how to praise and worship the Lord with nothing. And I know how to praise and worship the Lord and feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, you have to know one to know the other. <coughs> Excuse me. God's trying to teach and move you in every area of your life. Everything that you go through is for a reason and purpose. Sometimes it's because you're hard-headed and not listening. Amen? <coughs> if we learn to be obedient... If we learn to be obedient, we can move over to, you understand? And get back all the things that the devil stole from you. Amen? All right. It says, I know how to abound. I, I know how to enjoy the good and the bad, right? Now, listen, everywhere and in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry. Amen? Both to abound and suffer need. <clears throat> you know what's great about this country? Most of us, very few of us ever go to bed hungry. Very few of us ever go to bed hungry because we have nothing to eat. Do you realize that's a blessing from the Lord? You see, <clears throat> for most of us, if we're not careful... We focus so much on what we don't have or what somebody else has that we wish we did <clears throat> that we're not grateful for what we have. We're not thankful for what God's done for me. 
You, you see, you need to be thankful for what you have. Learn to be content with where you are, but not complacent. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You, you, you know, God wants to bless you as much as he's blessed anybody else. Do you realize that? Do you realize that, that listen to me, God does not have stepchildren. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? God does not have favorites. My Bible says what he's done for one, he'll do for the other. You know what the difference between you and somebody else is? Maybe a little bit of faith, a little bit of obedience, part of your ministry. Maybe the Lord teach. You understand what I'm saying? <coughs> you know, my Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What? Matthew 6, 33. And all these things shall be added unto you. Do you realize if you seek the Lord first and you keep him first, he wants to fulfill all of your dreams, all of your desires? Do you realize, do you, do you, do you honestly believe that? Because see, some of us are pretty upset with what maybe somebody else has or doesn't have because they might accept that and believe that God, you understand what I'm saying? So it, it's easier for me to be upset with them than it is for me to realize that maybe I need to make changes. Amen. See, it's, it's easier for me to think somebody else is just materialistic or somebody else is just something else. You understand what I'm saying? That it is for me to believe that maybe I don't have or do or be because I'm not where I should be with the Lord. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? You know, in, in this church, the one thing that we always try to teach is what? You're responsible for you. You're responsible for you. You know, the Bible tells us that at some point in time, you have to get off of the milk of the word and onto the meat. Yes. Do you understand what that means? Amen. That means that we got to quit worrying about what it means to get saved. Yes. And we got to start worrying about what it means to be blessed yes. and to be a blessing to somebody else. We have to quit worrying and fighting amongst ourselves over stupid, idiotic little things. Yes. Stop worrying about what God's doing in somebody else's life whether he's blessing or not blessing, whether they're in trouble or not, you understand what I'm saying? And start keeping the Lord first, seeking the Lord first, moving the Lord first, and worrying more about what me and the Lord got going on than what God, you and God got going on. Right? You get a lot of, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds good here on Sunday, don't it? Works great when we're all in here together. You know, everybody's looking around like. <laughs> but how about this? How about tomorrow we remember what we learned today? Yeah, that's right. Start applying it in our life, right? Yeah, yeah. And we start moving forward in our life. Because listen, this is one of my favorite scriptures. <clears throat> it says now, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Do you understand what that says? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you really get that this morning? Because see, what he just said is, listen, I can do all things. That means I can live through lack. Right? I can do all things. I can live through sickness and disease. I can do all things. I can get past heartache, hurt, and disappointment. I can do all things. I can excel at where I work and what I do. I can do all things. I can move. You understand what I'm saying? I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ. How much of your life are you trying to do through you? How much of what you're trying to accomplish is just you trying to be you? It's just you Listen to me, trying to tell the Lord how to run your life. You know, just like the gentlemen and the men that come work for me want to come tell me that they're doing just what I told them to do. You know, how many times have we gotten God's presence and told him, Lord, I'm doing just what you told me to do. You understand what I'm saying? You know, there's that old saying, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Amen. How about, you know, the Bible says I surrender all, all to him. My Bible says I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. Where's your strength come from? Well, that's what we say from the Lord. But you know, some of you think your strength comes from your good looks. Some of you think your strength comes from a few zeros in your bank account. Some of you, you understand what I'm saying? Some of us draw our strength from a relationship that we're involved in. Now listen to me. And some of us are drawing our strength from a bottle. My strength comes from Jesus. Do you understand what that means? See, that means I rely on him for everything. That means I count on him to be accountable to me. That means my hope, my trust, and all that I am revolves around him. You see, seek ye first means just that. Seek ye first. If we can get to that point that where your strength where your being, where all that you are is rooted and grounded in how Jesus sees you. Amen? See, some of us worry so much about our perception of what other people think about us. When, listen, how anybody thinks about you isn't helping you get into heaven. How anybody thinks about you isn't really helping your bank account grow. Per se, you understand what I'm saying? What other people think about you really don't matter. Let me tell you, you need to be worrying about what Jesus thinks about you. You need to be worrying about what Jesus thinks about you. And if you read your word, it'll tell you exactly what he thinks about you. You know, he said that you were beautifully and wonderfully made. He said that he made you for his good purpose and for his pleasure. God loved you. That You understand what I'm saying? That's who he says you are. So how about we get our identity through Jesus? And then when we read things like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not just a great saying. It's not just a verse in the Bible that really doesn't mean anything. It's a verse that you can take to the bank. It's a verse that you can build off of. It's a verse that does exactly what it says it'll do. It says, I can do all things. That means that I can handle everything that comes my way. That means with God, nothing is impossible. That means no matter what I'm facing, no matter how bad it looks, no matter what the devil is trying to whisper in my ear, I can do all things. I can weather this storm. Come on now. I can move past where I am. I can learn just like Psalms 91, to dwell in the presence of the Most High God. And in dwelling in His presence, I can get to a point that I understand that I am going to be victorious, that I am moving through this, that whatever it is that I'm facing is not going to consume or overtake me. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, you can endure a lot if you really know that you're going to be okay on the other side. Well, listen to me. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And if you'll do it God's way, if you'll do it his way, not only are you going to be okay, <laughs> you're going to be blessed on the other side. Do you really get and understand that? You, you know, we love these stories in the Bible. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Jonah, all of these stories. But do you realize and understand if, in what they were going through in the moment that they were going through it, in their eyes, it was the end? Do you get that? Do you understand that what Satan was trying to do and kill and destroy them in the natural is what should have happened? But in the supernatural, when God puts his twist on it, that that Satan intended for evil, God turned for good? Are you with me this morning? Does that make sense to you this morning? 
You see, if you learn to be content where you are and not complacent and standing on the word, that that Satan intended for evil, God turns for good. And now listen, when Jonah was thrown out of the, the, the ship and the, the big fish swallowed him, he should have drowned in the ocean and died. Correct? The thing that swallowed him, and then if you were Jonah and that big fish swallowed you, what do you think's getting ready to happen? <laughs> it's all over now. But listen to me. That big fish took him to where he needed to be to fulfill his ministry. And the thing in his life that should have been that, that was his demise and his death, is the catalyst that propelled him to a ministry that you know today. The thing in your life that is creating the biggest amount of heartache and hardship for you, if you'll let go and let God, God will turn that thing. And that'll be the challenge in your life that propels you to the next level that sustains who you are in Christ, that builds your relationship with Him, that moves you from glory to glory, from revelation to revelation. It'll be the catalyst that'll make you, listen to me, a better person and Christian than you are today. Amen. But you got to let go and let God. You got to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You understand what I'm saying? Then you can say with authority, I am above only and not beneath. See, I'm blessed when I go in. You understand what I'm saying? That is where the Lord wants you to be. But we got to stop focusing on the whale and the big fish. You understand what I'm saying? Start looking to the mountain. Stop looking at the mountain and start looking to the Savior. Thank you, Lord. God, I just love you. I just worship you. You realize when, when everything else is going wrong in your life, if you can't say nothing, just tell Jesus how much you love him. Lord, I just love you, Lord. I just love you, Lord. When you don't understand why you're in the mess you're in or what's going on, Father, I just trust you, Lord. I just trust you, Lord. I just trust you, Lord. You said in your word, right? I can do all things through, you understand what I'm saying? You said in your word, if you'll praise your way out of your challenge, the Lord will take care of your challenge for you. Amen. Amen. God's a good God. He's a good God. That scripture, I can do all things, all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, you got to get the whole scripture. Amen. You got to get the whole scripture. And then you got to read the verses prior and realize and understand that the reason he can say that is because he's already been through the bad. He's already weathered the storm. He's already, you understand what I'm saying? He's already had all the parts and the pieces that weren't the parts and the pieces that you really wanted. But he said, no matter what I'm in, where I am, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. You see, my trust is not in the president of the United States of America. My trust is not in Wall Street. My trust is not in the interest rates that the banks are charging. You understand what I'm saying? My trust is in you, O oh Lord. Is in you. Because in you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen.